Welcome. Today we're going to speak about childhood immunization. By the time you finish this session, you should be able to speak comfortably about the importance and value of immunization, the history of the expanded program in immunization, progress in vaccine coverage and the decline of vaccine preventable childhood diseases, progress in coverage of the newer vaccines, and challenges to vaccine coverage and efforts to address them. It's important to understand that immunization is considered a best buy in global health because of the extensive benefits that immunization produces at relatively low cost. In fact, it's been estimated that routine immunization against six childhood diseases prevents about two to three million child deaths each year and protects up to 100 million people a year against disability. Now, some of the most important benefits of childhood immunization include the following. One is it provides benefits to those who are immunized and through herd immunity, the immunity of a larger group that comes when a certain share of the population is vaccinated, through herd immunity, immunization also helps to protect those who are not immunized. Immunization can prevent diseases that are often treated with antibiotics and therefore reduce the risk of developing antimicrobial resistance. And immunization can help to keep people healthy, thereby promoting economic growth and poverty reduction and allowing children to become productive adults. In addition, immunization can save families from having to deal with the direct and the indirect costs of, vaccine prevent of dealing with children who get sick from vaccine preventable diseases. Now let's talk for just a, a minute or two about the history of global immunization programs, which have been um, developed by many countries uh, through working together, but of course are implemented by individual countries themselves and individual communities, but often with the assistance of a number of international actors. In 1974, the world launched what was called the Expanded Program on Immunization, or EPI. The EPI program focused on trying to cover all children globally with four vaccines against six different diseases. The first vaccine was BCG for tuberculosis. The second is DPT to fight against, immunize against diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. The third was measles, and the fourth was oral polio. Somewhat later, the expanded program on immunization added vaccines that were newly developed. And this included the vaccine against hepatitis B, usually called Hep B, the vaccine against yellow fever in areas in which yellow fever is endemic, and a vaccine against Haemophilus influenza B, which is usually referred to as Hib. Now, the world wasn't completely satisfied, nor were countries satisfied themselves with the progress being made in trying to ensure universal coverage of children with these vaccines. And therefore, in 1999, the world created an organization called Gavi, which initially was called the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. It's now called the Gavi Alliance. The aim of Gavi was to try to help countries uh, enhance the coverage with the original vaccines, the four vaccines for six diseases, but at the same time to enable coverage with newer vaccines as they were developed. And as it turns out, Gavi has also focused important attention uh, on trying on behalf of really the, the world collective to ensure that better vaccines were developed uh, that could be um, provided to children with fewer contacts with them to make it easier, uh, that vaccines might be more heat stable, more usable, have longer shelf lives, and vaccines that would be more affordable as well. Today, the Gavi Alliance, as it's now called, as I mentioned, is instrumental in helping a substantial number of countries to improve the coverage of uh, vaccines now it's working hard on promoting the use of what they call a pentavalent vaccine. And the pentavalent vaccine vaccinates against five different diseases, penta meaning five, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, 
Haemophilus influenza type B, Hib, and, and Hep B as well. And there is substantial progress now with more and more countries moving toward the use of the pentavalent vaccine. Gavi is also working hard uh, with countries that are working even harder, of course, to achieve full coverage for other vaccines, including for those against tuberculosis, polio, measles and rubella, pneumococcus, or a disease like pneumonia, and rotavirus, which uh, can help to address uh, one of the causes of diarrheal disease. Moreover, in settings where certain diseases are still endemic, Gavi's assisting countries in vaccinating against a number of other diseases, including yellow fever, as I mentioned earlier, Japanese encephalitis, meningitis A, and human papillomavirus, or HPV, as many of you would, uh, would know it. Now, there's been substantial, really substantial progress in improving the coverage of childhood vaccines, and the number of deaths due to the six diseases originally targeted under EPI fell from 900,000 a year in, two, in the year 2000 to 400,000 in 2010, which is still way too many, probably 400,000 too many, but that's a very substantial de decline. One can see, in fact, in the following graphic, uh, which looks too good to be true, that as immunization coverage goes up, okay, the number of cases of the disease goes down. Uh, and this happens to be a reported cases of measles globally and coverage with the measles vaccine. Again, this is the coverage, and this is what happens to the disease. It goes up. It's a safe, it's an effective vaccine. Uh, it's a highly transmissible disease. Children who are exposed to measles in the absence of vaccination will get it. Uh, it can also be lethal, especially in low-income uh, settings where children are often uh, undernourished. And this is just one of many examples we might find of the relationship between increasing coverage of, uh, of a vaccine and the decline in child deaths from the disease against, against which that vaccine is trying to work. Now, it's been estimated that about 84% of the eligible children in the world in 2013 were vaccinated against the six diseases were at the, that were at the core of the original expanded program on immunization. Now, the next graphic looks at the rates of immunization coverage for a small sample from a number of regions uh, of, of, of low and middle income countries. And what we see here, this is uh, rates of immunization coverage with the measles vaccine for selected countries in 2014. I'm gonna ask Lindsay, was this um, the first or the second dose? So this is the second dose. And indeed, one of the targets against which Gavi and, and countries are measuring progress in vaccination is the second dose of the measles vaccine. And here what we see is countries like Sri Lanka, which is a middle income country that has long been known for serious attention to the health and education of its people. They have achieved essentially universal immunization coverage with the second dose of measles. Here we see Brazil, very high rates of coverage. Latin America for many years has had a very sound program of immunization coverage carried out with the assistance of the Pan American Health Organization and a vaccine fund administered by the Pan American Health Organization as well. And then we see rates going down, but even in Ghana, which is a relatively poor country in Africa, we see two thirds of the children who are eligible were vaccinated with the second dose of measles. And sadly in Afghanistan, a, a very poor country, um, which has for many years, as you know, lived in conflict, they still have a very substantial unfinished agenda in terms of getting out the, uh, their vaccines and especially the vaccine against measles. In fact, unfortunately, despite the substantial progress in improving vaccine coverage, in 2013, it was estimated about 20% of all the eligible children in the world were not vaccinated at all. And uh, it was also estimated that more than 20 million children in 2012 did not receive even their first dose of measles vaccine. And as you would expect, these pockets of unimmunized child, children live in a relatively small number of large countries in areas that are called difficult. And these include the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, India, Nigeria, and Pakistan. As we look to the future, 
It's important to understand the challenges that confront the vaccination agenda and the efforts to achieve universal coverage with some of these critical vaccines. With this in mind, let's turn to one of the leading authorities in the world on childhood vaccination, Mr. Robert Davis, who will speak with us from Nairobi, where he's working with the International Red Cross.